Hello, I'm Scott Madison, and today I'll be telling you about uh, what are reservations and how are they formed. Now let's go out to the general public and see what different students think they are. Reservations are where the Native American tribes live because of all the stuff in our history where we took their land and so kind of congregated in their own reservations eventually. It's a place where we put them after uh, they wanted to take their land, I guess. It's a place where they live now currently nice because we wanted them to we wanted the land that they were currently on and so we put pushed them off of that and then formed this area where we were going to put them and it wasn't as good of a place that they were originally a uh, place offset by the government where i don't know i kind of think of them as like state parks almost or national parks mm -hmm. in a way even though they're not quite but they're kind of offset from the government um reservations yeah. are a place where there's sovereign nations where um, Native Americans can live outside the most restrictions of the U.S. government. I have no idea. As you can see, many of the people I just interviewed had an idea of what a Native American reservation was, but they really didn't know the details about it. Many people get the confusion that the U.S. government runs them, but that's not true at all. According to IndianAffairs.org, an Indian reservation is a designated area of land uh, managed by the Native American tribes under the United States Bureau of Indian Affairs. Many people then ask, where did these reservations come from, and how did they start? There are many events in history that had an influence on the Native Americans losing their homes and being forced to live somewhere else. Here, I am going to talk about some major trees that were enforced by the settlers in the Midwest that led the Native Americans to the reservations where many still live today. This started with a few different trees in the early 1800s in Minnesota, and these trees were called the Trees of St. Peter's. The first one was on September 23rd, 1805, and this was between the United States and the Sioux Nation. This treaty was to purchase two different areas of land, which each were nine square miles each, and now is known as Hastings in Minnesota. The second treaty was written on July 29th, 1837, and it was conducted by Governor Henry Dodge. It was written for the Ojibwe bands, located on the Minnesota and Wisconsin border. This would give a large amount of land to the white settlers that come to Minnesota. And this was the start of many trees that would eventually face the Native Americans to move to the reservations. Later in 1849, Governor Alexander Ramsey tried to push the Dakota to sign a treaty, but they would not do it. Governor Ramsey asked Henry Sibley to convince the Native Americans to sign it, but the Dakota said they would not sign it until the United States government gave them what they promised in the St. Peter's Treaty. After some compromising, the United States decided to release five Dakota prisoners if they would sign it. On August 5, 1851, leaders from the Dakota met with Henry Sibley to sign the treaties. After signing three treaties, the Dakota discovered that the treaties were altered from when they discussed it and they were not told about it. At this point, it was too late for the Dakota and they had to move to a reservation which was a permanent change of life. In 2015, there are 22 different reservations that are located across Wisconsin and Minnesota where there are thousands of families that are trying to succeed with inadequate education and funding. 